everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War objectives for the Itsy Bitsy Spider event in which the cocoon is added to the game. Also, don't forget from last Friday, the new Mythic is also still in the Glory Gem Guild and VIP chest if you want to still try getting that, you have until this uh, Friday in order to do that at Friday reset time. I still don't understand why this one doesn't have a timer like all the other ones, but do keep in mind it does expire on the Friday at Friday reset time which is in four days from now. But anyways, let's go into the event. So Cocoon, the blue purple arcane truth stones. Earlier on in the game, you would use this mainly for Winter Wolf and later on for things like uh, Queen Mab as the best freezer and Scion for uh, Mana Drain. As far as this troop itself, it is pretty bad. It webs a random enemy and then summons a random spider. From what I can tell, that random spider is either a spider swarm, a giant spider, a tome spider, a spinneret, or a web spinner. It cannot uh, summon a arachnid weaver, or at least in the multiple times I have tested it, I have not seen it summon one. Just those five or six, however many I just mentioned. But um, yeah, basically all the ones that have eight legs that look like a spider. Unfortunately, spider is not an actual type, so it's kind of hard to really distinguish that. But uh, those, I believe, are the ones that it ends up summoning. Anyways, uh, nothing really too special with this other than that it's basically like the fortress gates and all those. Uh, uh, really low attack, but really decent durability. And it does have a magic link, which is useful since it goes into its own color and also synergizes with the fact that it can summon a giant spider. Though because it has such a low chance to actually summon a giant spider, it doesn't really go over too well. Uh, for the most part, I would never bother using this troop, not even for the bonus that it has this week. But still, probably a troop you want to collect just for the sake of having it. Other than that, as far as the event objective related things, we have ourselves 10% to also carry as well as 10% to all uh, elves. Uh, we get 40 souls whenever we use Cocoon, but there are many reasons why you would never want to use this. Uh, only in Explore. But um, the main reason being, Ferris Ra is in the Soul Forge this week. And as far as the event objective, you just, have, you just have to kill a bunch of brown in either PvP or Explore. You'd most likely want to do this in PvP, because at least in late game, a lot of people tend to set their defend team as four Drake Riders. And if they do have it set as four Drake Riders, you'll be able to get eight brown kills per battle very quickly so uh, yeah definitely do it in pvp it's probably going to be quicker overall especially if a lot of people around your level range are using that team or similar related teams that have a lot of browns on them so uh, really easy to get these done uh, it doesn't normally take too long to just kill a bunch of whatever the color is and you do have the option of doing an explore you can just do it in any kingdom that is heavily into brown if you so choose as far as event keys, there are only two really kind of noteworthy things in the drop table right now. It's Web Spinner, which is good for infinite green spam, as well as really high triple damage off of whenever it does uh, skull damage to something that's poisoned, and its ability poisons everything, so really easy to do that. And Arachnine Weaver. Arachnine Weaver is the mythic, so very low chance, only about a 1 in 1,000 chance that you would specifically get it from a key, but it is a really good true damage support. There's true damage to the last two enemies, as well as webs all enemies, and has impervious. It's generally just used for delves, particularly with a Megavore, but also just in general, due to the summon that it has of a web spinner, as well as the fact that it gets to web all enemies, the only thing that can currently do that efficiently. And uh, that's really good in things like delves, because stats get really high, and that will reduce their magic down to zero. That doesn't necessarily mean their ability is going to be useless, but whatever is magic based on their ability will be reduced to zero. It also prevents them from being able to gain uh, any magic, anything that's currently webbed. Anyways, as far as raids, we have that this week, of course. Uh, we got a new weapon, which we'll be showing a team for in a moment. But first, let's go for the uh, new uh, raid troop. So it's uh, pretty underwhelming. It's just deal damage to a single enemy, blah, blah, blah. It's boosted based on webs, which uh, generally are not even going to get a single one off. Or maybe you might get a few. Depends how you end up playing the battle. But uh, overall, just pretty much this is what a standard raid troop would look like. Um, and because of this, there isn't too many things within this kingdom that are actually good to use. Of course, the restriction is Zolkari, and Zolkari, uh, yeah, does not have much of a selection as far as useful things to, uh, end up putting into a team. Uh, alternatively, if you wanted to, or if you don't have a Arachnine Weaver, you can put a Tyree there. It might even be better with Tyree. I haven't tested extensively enough yet to know for sure. But, um, yeah, Tyree, definitely a nice replacement. Dark Maiden, if you don't have some of the higher rarity stuff. Uh, great replacement, does a lot of mana generation and some HP gain. And uh, Tyree you get for free, even though she's an epic, you get her for free for completing out the Zolkari Kingdom. So uh, definitely go do that if you haven't already for her. Also the great at farming maps, though more so it's just used for destroy gems. And it's really decent board control that it has. 
So uh, you can do any number of those things to uh, end up making it work. But we'll go with this. Basically, does anything into Mang Titan. Uh, don't necessarily have to do that. You could go Mountain Crusher and just try doing it with damage. But uh, generally, just how these events normally go, at least with raids, uh, Mang normally is the way to go, and Titan it just happens to be the best way to go about it. So right here, I kind of want to go get Web Spinner up so we can go get Weaver up so we can go get everything kind of looping because we'll get a bunch of explosions from that. So we'll take our green right there. Go get a Mang first, and then we'll hopefully have alignment. Actually, you know what? We already have alignment. Let's take it while we have it. Even though we got to get rid of all of our browns, it's still worth it overall. So we can go use this on the uh, raid boss right there. I should double check to see if that was enough damage. Oh, never mind. It'll hit on that. So it is enough damage to that at least. And um, yeah, that's pretty much that. We can then go throw another mang if we want. Could even go kill it out with it. And just go from there. I should have taken that skull, actually. But, oh well. He webbed us. Uh, that means we have basically no magic now. Only do one damage with our ability. But luckily, we still have all of our skull damage. Uh, so right now, I guess we'll go for a green. Didn't get the yellow cascade we wanted. I could take a skull right there by taking the purple. Oh, no, we can't. It's going to drop too low. Uh, you know what? I still want to do that. We get a lot of mana out of it. Enough that it's probably worth it. So we'll go get another Weaver, and that's pretty much that. Let's take a Skull, and then just Weaver it down. But yeah, something along these lines. Uh, basically, just go and all in on Mang or similar weapons, and doing that is a good majority of your damage, as this kingdom does not really have too many other things for damage options. One thing that you could potentially use if you wanted to go down that route of damage alternatives is either a Web Spinner loop, but the issue with this is um, you'd be able to kill everything out pretty decently with the triple damage. But um, the raid boss would be the biggest issue with using that. And uh, with the Widow Queen, you can do somewhat similar in that you will just keep sacrificing the same troop over and over again and doing damage to everything slowly over time. So either of those other two methods could possibly work too, though generally probably just a Mang is the best bet, as it normally is. But anyways, on to the things that we have this week. Uh, on Tuesday, we have the first coming of the uh, new faction. Well, you know, new-ish. It was the most recently added uh, faction. The one of the uh, Primal Rift for uh, Forest of Thorns. And, um, yeah, this is the first time we've had a Tuesday event for it. Uh, nothing too special or different than the other event, just that it lasts for one day. But uh, if you wanted to go and power level it, you could on that day if you haven't already. On Wednesday, we're just going to be getting a soul-gaining pet, which is pretty good because, as I mentioned, we have Ferris Ra in the Soul Forge. On Thursday, uh, we have the Orb Weaver, which is the hero class for this kingdom, so it synergizes perfectly with it. Uh, also, I'll be starting to show the team for this on the Monday videos as well. Uh, we always go over it on Thursday, at least in the stream, if nothing else. But I figured we start going over them on Monday videos too, just because we've already gone over basically every single hero class already now. And they're, of course, they're just repeating over. So I figured just mentioning it briefly on a Monday video, since most people tend to watch that, but not necessarily each individual stream, would be a better way of going about going over them. And um, we also, this Friday, will be having a Vault event. Vault events are good for getting a bunch of Vault keys to go get a bunch of good resources, like orbs and other valuables. Anyways, as far as Soul Forge, already mentioned it a couple times, but of course, the most noteworthy thing is Ferris Ra. He is arguably the most valuable thing you can ever craft, though probably second as far as the thing that you would actually craft first. Uh, first would be Infernus, second would be Ferris Ra. Though if you take overall value into account, I don't know, I guess Infernus is slightly more. It depends what really what you're currently trying to go after. But basically, one of the reasons why Ferris Ra is so sought after, even though you probably almost never see me using him, is he has 150% soul gain. This is insanely good if you still need souls, particularly for Dawnbringer, as Dawnbringer requires 1.3 million souls, 1 million to craft it, 100,000 for each of his three components. And that's one of the main things that Ferris Ra is really used for. It greatly reduces the grind time of uh, needing to get souls due to the fact that it has 150% soul gain, which is way higher than anything else. Uh, highest otherwise is only 50%. So he basically has the capability of three troops all in one single troop with that 150% bonus. It is definitely very, very highly advised to get this as early as possible. Uh, not at, ex at the expense of making a good team, like obviously you might want Infernus and other damage sources first possibly. But if you're finally going to go do the soul grind, you're going to want to get a Ferris Raw first because it will cut your ha time in half with a single one. It will greatly reduce it even more once you get a second one, if you're going to get a second one. But definitely get at least one of this guy if you can afford the 4,000 diamonds. He is really good. Uh, his ability itself isn't really anything too over the top. It's pretty good for focus damage. It uh, transforms all yellow to purple, deals some damage to an enemy, 
and then it's boosted by all souls and then gains uh, 20 souls, which is half the full capacity of however many souls. Uh, by default, he will have 100%, I mean, he'll have 100 souls. The base is 40, or I mean, yeah, the base is 40, and his extra 150% would give it additional 60, which would bring it, of course, to 100, meaning you could potentially hit about 120 or so with his ability, which in uh, most states of the game will be enough to one-shot pretty much anything. Uh, of course, not in things like raids, invasions, stuff like that, but as far as um, normal PvP stuff, you'll be one-shotting most things with him if you wanted to use him for that. Though he's generally just used with an explorer and just spamming it over and over again. Like first challenge the Vinian Fields or any other explorer where you can quickly get kills. Anyways, that's that. Definitely consider getting him if you can afford him. Anyways, let's go over a bunch of teams now. For a bunch of various stuff. We'll start off with... Um, well, I'm not actually going to be using these two, so let's start with these. As far as the Thursday event, as I mentioned, I'll start going over these on Mondays now. Uh, of course, we'll still be covering on Thursdays when we go and do it. But uh, as far as Thursday event, cheapest thing you could possibly get away with is Mang is Titan, uh, followed by a Tyree. Tyra will be able to just feed you. Oh, do keep in mind, um, should have mentioned that first. The restriction is Zolkiri Elves, so you can only use things that are Zolkiri that are also Elves. So be mindful of that. Uh, other than Hero, Hero can be anything, including different Hero classes. But yeah, just Titan with Mang. Uh, Tyree as a follow-up, just for the mana accumulation that it has and board control. And the Double Dark Maiden is mainly just to feed Tyree mana. You can go replace these out with Weaver and other stuff if you want. But uh, this is mainly to utilize her Nature Link, which ends up giving us extra green. Which, of course, given that Tyree uses green, this will allow us to get her easier. And this now allows us to set our banner completely into Mang. And the reason I have it set to Double Brown instead of Double Red is mainly because, of course, as Titan, we'll be taking a lot of browns due to the fact we gain barrier every single brown we take. And uh, we can just solo the entire battle off of that. And everything else is basically just a support. To make sure he doesn't die even the dark maidens give him extra hp to make sure that doesn't happen as far as the uh, other team soul farming i just wanted to show something with ferris raw of course the dragon soul ferris raw azurus uh, umber wolf generally the way this goes down is you go to something like divinian's first challenge or any other location that is super easy to kill go to warlord 2 difficulty where it'll kill out the entire team in three shots and then use something along the lines of this uh, basically, the Dragon Soul is to kill them and also gain souls. Uh, we have the Ferris Ra as the main component of what we're using right now, just to gain 150% extra souls. Uh, Azurus would be replaced with a second Ferris Ra if you actually had a second Ferris Ra. Otherwise, uh, you just use Azurus. Uh, he's a little bit better than standard Necromancy hero classes or uh, Necromancy troops, mainly because other than just having Necromancy, he also has a Magic Link, which is important because most soul farming teams are very heavily purple dependent. And this team is no different. And uh, the last troop is can be one of two things. It can either be your hero set as any hero class that has Purple Storm, ideally the Necromancer, so you gain a little bit of extra souls. You can even do it on a uh, Warlord 1 difficulty, I believe, and just two-shot it there and still get the max capacity of souls. But basically, the most important thing is that you have a Dark Storm. And Umber Wolf just works good for this because this allows you to set your hero class as anything else while still perpetually having a Purple Storm. And, um, yeah, we just cast this three times. Could have cast Ferris Raw there, but it's not really needed. Uh, we just cast this three times, and we'll reach max souls. And uh, the battle will be done. We'll get an absurd amount of souls here. And you just basically keep repeating that until you have all the souls you ever want. It's a bit of a grind, but uh, Ferris Raw, at minimum, halves the amount of time you need to take for it. And having multiple will speed it up even more. Anyways, that's that. Let's go and now show the uh, one last thing I wanted to show, and that is the new weapon. Uh, we ended up getting a new weapon, of course, from raids, as we always do. Raids and invasions always end up bringing in uh, a new weapon. Uh, this thing is pretty underwhelming, but I did want to show a team for it just because it's new. It deals damage to an enemy, creates uh, five purple, and then is boosted by every webbed enemy uh, for a total of 12 additional spawn, meaning that I could do a total of 17, assuming the entire enemy team is entangled. That is quite a bit of purple. Uh, it's pretty pretty much always going to land an extra turn. So, um, yeah, far stroll for the greens. This weapon for the purple. Green seer for the greens. And weaver to be able to utilize all of that. Uh, of course, we do need webs in order to get that weapon rolling. And the only viable web option currently in the game, unfortunately, is arachnean weaver. Uh, I feel like if you did not have arachnean weaver, you would never use this weapon. Though, then again, you would also never use this weapon, period. But <laughs> figured we still show something for it. So move that, move that. Um, let's see, we're gonna need a Weaver before we do anything, so probably best just to double green, though this does not look like a good board to double greens on him, we're gonna just wait a turn, luckily he does not deny any of my greens, we'll go for it now, it kinda misses, but we need to make sure we get that all the way to full before we can really do, uh, 
anything else. So let's see here. We can try taking this green over. It doesn't look like it's going to give him anything bad. So now that we have Weaver, we can go throw this down, so we'll his entire team. And now we can start actually getting this team rolling. So unfortunately, he does have one Impervious, meaning we're only going to be getting a 14 purple spawn. But that should still be enough for an extra turn. We'll do that to get rid of his barrier. Unfortunately, those extra three made it so he did not get an extra turn. But oh well, we'll do this on red. Get all the mana back. Uh, should be able to get this rolling now. So uh, Weaver, take that out whenever we can. And basically, we just keep hitting it back and forth. Nothing really too over the top, but I don't know. It kind of works, I guess. Um, pretty underwhelming, given that this is pretty much the best case scenario for the weapon. And it does not look too good. But uh, still, nonetheless, that's basically what it's used for. If you were to bother using it for anything, is into any kind of Weaver combination with it. Or until they add another better web option other than Weaver. Because Weaver is pretty expensive. It's 20 mana and doesn't have a guarantee extra turn. Um, there really isn't any good methods to apply webs. Nothing has it on 4 times 5 times matches, which of course would be the best way of putting it on if it was to ever exist. Though currently... Oh wait, actually, you know what? It does. Uh, that one legend has that ability, doesn't it? But I guess we could actually run it that way too. Instead of this, we could basically run the exact same team or similar but have the legend that webs every single time. I actually completely forgot about that. The uh, Spider Queen, if I'm not mistaken, does that. The uh, She's actually in the event key drop table too. Um, I believe she does that. My memory is correct. Uh, if I could actually go all the way down there. Uh, yeah, don't you web every single four times, five times? Yeah, four times, five times. What am I saying? Yep, it exists. So yeah, you could alternatively use that instead if you don't have a weaver and have that for the loop. Uh, the only bad thing about her damage, though, is that you do have to kill something, so goodbye Farce Troar or something else, because uh, something's going to need to die if you're going to bother using her. But uh, yeah, that's also an alternative if you don't want to use the Weaver with it. But bottom line, this weapon's useless, just want to show something with it. Also, don't get it any further than 5. If you get it to 6, it'll have a 1 second delay, and if you get it to 7, it has a weird uh, purple destroy which doesn't make any sense given that it creates purple. It's basically just making it harder. Uh, unfortunately, that Dark Storm would have been very useful with it, but it's being blocked by a useless Destroy 3 purple. So, uh, unfortunately, not really worth going for. But anyways, guys, that'll wrap it up for this video. If you still have anything else that you want me to go over, let me know, and we'll make sure to do so. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Best of luck if you're going to be trying for the Mythic or anything else, and I will see you all later. Goodbye, everyone!